G Suite Groups. What are groups? You can create mailing lists, group individuals in a common area. For example, everyone in the sales team, everyone in the payroll team can be in a group. You can use groups to give access to different applications like Blogger or YouTube within the G Suite environment without changing your entire organizational structure. Groups are very powerful and that's what we're going to take a look at right now. So as you can see, we got the Google Admin, G Suite Admin interface on the page. Over to Groups, click on that, and you can see I've already created one for Sales. As you can see, the group name is called Sales. It's sales at collaborationkernel.com is the email address, and you can directly email that entire group from your email client and everybody in that group will get that email. Currently there's one member, uh, it's an access type, which we'll come on to a minute, uh, which we can view. Uh, let's have a look at that. So you can see it's got a custom access type uh, and the access settings are, you can contact owners. Okay, got all these access settings over here, but we'll cover this in a bit more detail in a minute. Um, this is all very good if you know what the icons and what it all means. But when you go and create a group, you're given a better insight into this. Uh, but suffice to say, you can change the access type for this and you can change these details here. Okay, right, so we'll get back to that in a moment. Uh, you can add members from this group administration interface. You can click on add and then say, I don't know, uh, Jeff Bond, we'll add him in, add to group. And then you'll see, we'll very soon have two members, which is great. Um, you can then manage members. So got collabor Colonel Collaborations in there as the owner and Jeff Bond is a member. You can change them to be a owner or a manager as well, um, all depending on what the access is like. Click save at the bottom. You can also from this point here, delete the group or rename the group. But like with everything within G Suite, nothing is instantaneous and some renaming of groups will take a short while. Click save. You added Jeff Bond in as a member. Click on sales just to go back a level and enter groups. Right, okay. Um, you can edit settings. This is what I was talking about editing settings, custom settings. And whereas the quick interface bar that popped up from the right hand side was really good and really helpful, it didn't have any of these logo informations in front of them. So, Let's go through them. Again, you can rename and delete the group. But let's talk about access type. You've currently got the access type as custom. This access type determines the access settings below, right? And click on the little pen and you can edit them. So your custom access can be edited or you can go for any of the standard access types. For example, public lets you pretty much do anything. You can group owners, contact owners, group managers, entire organization. You can publish posts, view topics. Um, group managers can invite and approve people into um, this particular group. Now, for example, if it was a general interest group within the organization, say, say it was a, a group about, I don't know, scuba diving, for example. So, you know, um, you had a general interest group that wasn't work related about scuba diving or the company picnic, or something like that, something that was general and not work related, then perhaps you'd want group members to add people in and you'd select that selection there. I don't know, it's a very powerful tool. And what you've got to consider with this access is how it could possibly be abused. So everyone can view topics, everyone can publish posts, but then perhaps you don't want everyone, the entire organization, to look at this particular team. You just want group members, group managers, and group owners to view topics. There may be sensitive information in here, right, that you don't want the general populace of the company to know. Given that it's sales, it could be sales leads. And, you know, you might not want them, everybody knowing that who you're pursuing for your latest sales gig 
um, you know, and for that information to turn up on L Reg or the register or the layoff or something like that. This could be, you know, a group about workforce management, a very nasty and, and horrible process um, to go through. But one that's necessity really is all driven around keeping the business running. As businesses, um, you know, grow and contract as the business ebbs and flows, then, you know, people are, are in, really would have to sometime be let go. And it has to be a group where people can share information about this safely without, you know, and delicately in keeping the human factor. So for example, only the group members, managers and owners of that group who could be defined about that particular topic would gain access to it. So that's a little bit about set settings as well. Here you've also got the external settings, right? Um, if you want to share this group with external bodies, say for example, you are in partnership with another supplier say you were a razor company right and then you wanted to partner with another company who made shaving foam well then you could set up a group right with um, strict protocols obviously and what could be shared within this group and then share it with somebody outside of your organization interesting stuff to consider um, who can join the group anyone in the organization can join at the moment no only invited users right get someone invited to the group do you want to allow members outside your organization yes or no all depends what's stored on the group like i say if it's a collaborative group where you want to sh openly share information for transparency then use this setting if not then think long and hard about you know what kind of access group membership people should have now, as we go through restricted, you can see we've got different things you can you can and can do. Externally, the entire organization can't do anything really. Um, group members can. Uh, announcement only, you can see, you know, group members, view members can't do that. You've got team, pretty much does it all. Uh, and then public, again, is the same as team. There's no real difference. All things considered though, excellent help involved with the Google interface. Click on learn more and it'll take you to a web page where you can typically go through the entire topic in detail. How to rename a group, how to change a group's email address, change the group settings in new groups. Now as with users, changing a group's email address is quite a little bit complicated. The old email address becomes an alias. So planning, forward planning about your group structure is very important. Okay, so we've decided that this is gonna be a restricted group and we're gonna click save. We don't want any external people on there. We don't want the entire organization in there as well, right? We just want these people in here and we want only invited people because it's sales, right? And sales, that's your bread and butter. That's your company's lifeblood. That's what we're going to do. Save. Excellent. Excellent stuff. All done. Let's go back up. So as we can see now, we've got um, two direct members, one owner and one manager of the group. You can also add a group description in there as well. I mean, should you want to. Um, hey, you know, company sales funnel. nice and easy makes it a little bit easier when you're when you're actually moderating these groups and, and you're managing these groups um, got the aliases there sales at collaboration kernel.com test account really so I got test.google.a.com at the bottom uh, let's go back to sales also here we've got settings you see our settings have been um, put down Access settings, owners, managers, and members can post content. Owners, managers, and members can view topics. Allow members outside your organization, no. And then who can join the group? It shows you who can join the group, only invited users. Um, and membership settings, There's your membership settings as well. So a few different ways on how you can get people into a group. Okay. So let's go back to the main main group let's create a group okay we're going to create a group we're going to call it payroll 
Okay, we're going to give a company payroll group, perhaps one of the most important groups for all the employees in the company. We're going to call this group email, hey, payroll. And we're going to add somebody in there. We're going to call the... Now, as for group owners, typically you haven't got to assign a group owner. Makes things a little bit easier on group setup, but you haven't got to do it. You can just bang through it. Um, <clears throat> there you go. Who can do it? Of course, this is going to be a payroll team, highly restricted, right? Um, perhaps you don't want people contacting the entire organization, or perhaps you do. Hey, you want everybody to turn around and say, where's my pay slip? So perhaps you do want that section on. External, I would say a no-no. Just for example, you don't want to allow members outside your organization, and who can join the group? Only invited users, or you could say, well, to be fair, you don't want anyone asking. Only invited users would be good in this term, wouldn't it, really? And create group. So you could actually use team, right? And then change these settings, thus making it custom. Another good way of doing it. Um, anyway, so we're going to create our group. Bang, there it is. Right, so we've got payroll, see details. Cool, everything's done. And you can create another group. You can see the details for that group as well. Typically, that is groups. Um, nice and easy, a good logical way of grouping people together. As you can see, we've got quite a few people there. Uh, if we go back to our Google admin, let's log back in. Look at our user community. Of course, we've got Jeff Bond there. You know, uh, if you go to more here, um, on Jeff we've got number of groups he's a manager of a group see all the information is linked together which I think is good stuff okay so it all reflects through the entire organization you get a real rich user and group experience so going back to users uh, we're just going to show Sarah Dennis there you go she's she's um, going to be our payroll person so we'll pop back into admin and then we're going to, after the effect or post creation, go to groups, uh, over to payroll, add a member, Sarah Dennis or Sarah Jeffrey, click add to group. And there you go. Then, of course, you can edit settings, effectively do what you want with it. So that was group settings, group setup. You can delete your groups, you can edit your groups, all from these settings over here. You know, um, what other columns do you want to do? You want to do you want to see in there? Add a new column. Who can view members? Who can post? Who can join the group? So you can effectively, from this section, customize how much information you see on your group membership and group administration part of the page. Anyway, there you go. That was a quick uh, talk about group membership. You can also email the groups as well. Nice way of getting hold of everybody should you have a query or should you have um, you know, a question. You can turn that facility off, of course, if you don't want everyone to be pestered. But a good, simple way of group administration. Hope you enjoyed the video. Check back for more videos in the series.